Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's use synthetic division to find the roots of a parabola. Now, of course, this doesn't only work for parabolas. It also works for uh, polynomials that have higher orders. And it's a very good method for polynomials to do the third order, fourth order, fifth order, and so forth that cannot be factored. Now, this particular example, we can factor it and find the roots this way. We can use the quadratic formula and find the roots that way. But let's go ahead and use synthetic division because, after all, we need to learn the method and it's better to start off with an easy example. And we know that this one does have roots. So, let's write down the, the uh, coefficients of the three terms. That's a positive one, a minus two, and a minus three. Draw a line below it like this. And let's try our first root. Let's try x equals one. So we place the number one here, we draw a line down here, we drop the first number down here, we write, we go one times one is equal to one, negative two plus one is a negative one, one times a negative one is a negative one, minus three add to minus one is equal to minus four. This number here is not equal to zero, which indicates that x equals one is not one of the roots. So x equals one is not one of the roots. All right, now let's try another number. So we need to go ahead and clean this off. And now we're going to try x equals negative one. Negative one. All right. So again, we use the same methodology. Negative one times one is a negative one. Add these together, you get a negative three. Negative one times a negative three is a positive three. Add these together, you get a zero. Bingo. This number, the remainder there is zero. That means, therefore, x equals negative one is one of the roots. Now what you could do is you can say, okay, if that's one of the roots, that makes it easy to find the second root, but just for the sake of trying, of trying this method, let's see if we can come up with the other root. Now I have a little bit of a hint. I know that I have a negative three here, and I know that one of my roots is a negative one, so maybe three is another root, so let's see if three also works in this particular case. So again, how did I do that? I know that one of my roots is a negative one, I see a negative three here, and so I say, well, to get a negative three, maybe a positive three would work, and let's try that as our next attempt. And let's try x equals three. We put a three over there. Three times one is equal to three. Negative two plus three is a positive one. Three times one is three. Add those together, I get zero, and sure enough, I found my other root, so x equals a positive three is my second root. There are the two roots. Synthetic division is actually a really good method to find the roots, and sometimes you can look at the numbers and come up with some good ideas. Now notice that if this number gets to be really large, you're going the wrong direction. If you keep making x bigger and bigger and this number becomes larger and larger, then definitely there's no roots in that direction. You need to turn around, around, go the other direction, make x smaller, and see if this number finally goes to zero. So that's how we use synthetic division to find the roots, which comes in really handy when we try to graph polynomials of third order, fourth order, and fifth order to find the roots so we know where the polynomial, where the graph of the polynomial crosses the x-axis. That's, after all, why we're looking for those roots.